Welcome back, everyone, to the second half hour of News Talk for this Tuesday. I'm Bruce DePoy. It's great to have you here. Are admissions policies at a major local university more attuned to a prospective student's ability to pay than the public has been led to believe? A new report in the student newspaper at George Washington University suggests the answer is yes. Jeremy Diamond is assistant news editor at the GW Hatchet, and he joins us now. Welcome. It's good to have you with us. Hi. Thank you for having me, Bruce. This story, uh, and it's only 24 hours old, I believe, or maybe maybe a, a bit longer than 36 hours old, something like that, it, it's creating a lot of waves because it goes at the notion that when a high school student applies to the school, that the first look at his or her what he or she brings to the table is not a function, even partially, of the family's ability to afford GW's hefty tuition. But your reporting suggests it may be a more complicated picture than that. Right. So, so essentially, for as long as, as we know, and the university has said that the policy has not changed, um, what they're telling us is basically that uh, the admissions policy at first, um, you know, when the first round of applications, they don't consider financial need. Um, but when they get down to the 10% of applicants uh, who are essentially just barely accepted or just barely waitlisted qualified applicants, uh, but who are not among the top pool, then they start to look at, you know, the, uh, the financial aid budget and they start to make some switches. And, and make some decisions based on a student's ability to pay. Why is this a big deal? Why is this something that is raising eyebrows or prompting an even deeper conversation? Well, what we're hearing, uh, we're hearing two things, I guess. We're hearing, first of all, uh, backlash about the policy itself. A lot of uh, students are, are, you know, students that I've talked to in the Student Association are, are angry that this policy is, at, in fact, a need-aware policy, meaning it takes financial aid into account. Um, and the second thing is really just disappointment. That's the main word that I'm hearing uh, in terms of how people are reacting to the university's, you know, misrepresentation of the policy, essentially saying that the university University misled uh, prospective students, families, uh, and the current student body um, by, by mischaracterizing its policy. Does the disappointment be, go beyond that in terms of the broad desire on the part of the university, the student body, and others to have a student body that is maximum diverse? Uh, yeah, well, that's what we've been hearing in terms of the criticism of the need aware policy specifically. Uh, I spoke with the student association president, and she said essentially, you know, we want students to be at GW because they're great students, uh, and that's one of the things so that rich, we're hearing about. Not the so rich in between the full spectrum of America. Right, right. Uh, but but the university is is essentially saying, you know, this policy allows us to meet more financial need for more students. Essentially saying that, you know, because they're able to make some decisions, those top students can get larger financial aid packages. They can get more money to be able to afford GW. So are they saying the more rich kids come in, the more the, the, the pot of dollars for those who need help is there for them? Is I, I don't know that they're saying that directly, but, but that's but certainly... I mean, if, you stri if you strip away the nicer language they would use and, and, and adopt more kind of bottom line terms, is that kind of it? There, there are some decisions being made to make sure that they have more money available for, for students on financial aid. That's now, there's, sure. th there's a new admissions person at the school? Yes. Uh, so Lori Kohler was hired uh, in the spring. She came on this summer as associate provost uh, for enrollment management. Uh, so essentially, that's a new position at GW, the first time that they ha they've had someone overseeing the admissions office and the financial aid office, uh, as well as the office of the registrar. And essentially, so she, you know, in an interview, clearly said, our policy is actually need aware. Um, and that was the first time that we had heard that from the university. Uh, it, was, uh, it was not what was being told to students. Uh, but she is, you know, what the university is saying uh, is essentially, you know, she's a new person. She is being transparent. She is trying to change things in the way that things are done and portrayed. Um, and that's really what we're hearing from the university. This is a really interesting topic, and it extends beyond the campus at Foggy Bottom. It, it extends beyond the decisions that uh, folks at George Washington make every year about who to admit and, and who to put on the wait list or not to admit. So uh, let, me open up, let, me op let me open up the phone lines now to get your thoughts on this broad question about uh, the extent to which, if at all, university admissions policies should take into account a student's ability to pay. Phone lines open as we talk with Jer Jeremy Diamond. He's ass assistant news editor at the GW Hatchet, the student paper at the school. Phone lines open for your questions and comments at our number, 703-387-1020. We'll go to the phones as your calls come in. Do join the conversation. This is an important topic. As I say, we'll take your calls as they come in at our number, 703-387-1020.
It was interesting in reading the reporting that you've done, which is on your website right now, to see how the school has reacted almost within the day. I mean, you had a story, I, correct me if I'm wrong, that, that, that got posted Friday or Saturday, and by Saturday night, you could you could see the school react. Uh, the story was actually posted on on Monday morning, but we we did start our essentially. I had my interview with Lori Kohler, who's the new uh, enrollment manager, on Friday, and we started getting you know fielding responses, and we were trying to get more answers and interviews. Um, so they started shifting their their uh, their admissions website, for example, which initially stated that the policy was in fact need blind, that it didn't take into account financial mm -hmm. need. They changed that website on Saturday afternoon after we started asking questions, uh, and on Monday morning our story went online, uh, got a lot of buzz, um, and the university has been, you know, responding and putting out uh, some statements since then. Um, but the story's not done. You know, we're still following it on our website at gwhatchet.com, and we're still continuing uh, the conversation and still trying to, to look at more angles of the story because there's a lot more, uh, a lot more to, to dig up. It is striking and it is sort of mind-blowing how expensive school is. I was talking with a neighbor this morning. I was walking my dog. He was walking his. He's got a kid at Williams. It's sixty thousand a year to go to to go to Williams. I think your school is. is we're right. Up, we're right up there. Uh, GW's total cost of attendance is about fifty-eight thousand. Uh, Fifty, you know, in, in a that year. Range. Yeah, a year. When you talk about tuition, housing, fees, all of those things taken into account, that's how much you're going to be, you know, paying to the university or in terms of expenses for. It, it, it's a mind-blowing number, and I and and one of the things I would I would love to understand over time is why it costs so much. I went to a state school, and I went to school a long time ago. I'm probably your parents' age. And I, I think my four years was a fraction of one year. It was, it was about half. I went to school for half of one year of GW or Williams today. So maybe, maybe at a bottom line, it's... That's not making me very happy right now. Or, or your folks yeah. probably either. Um, but, you know, maybe the sad reality is that when it costs so much, they can't go into it blind, even in, as noble as that notion might be. That, that's certainly what the university is saying. Um, you know, they're, they're saying that they can meet more of a student's financial aid package. Currently, GW meets about 88% of a, a student's total financial need, meaning how much, you know, the federal forms and all of that say that they need to attend GW. Um, so, so they're saying that they're able to, to do more of that with this policy. To the phones, Jessica in Howard, you're on the air. Thanks for calling in. Go ahead, please. Hi, I would just like to say I once actually attended Smith College. So my school is about 50000 a year, which is an extraordinary amount. It is. And I can understand talking to my uncles who went to school around the same time you did. <laughs> Prices were definitely much lower and unexpected. But at my school, it was sort of the same. They didn't really say it out there. But they definitely, people who could pay for the full tuition, would, their, part of their tuition would go towards the financial and need-based packages, which when I would speak, I had friends who were on completely full financial aid who got full rides, and they were very appreciative mm -hmm. and knew about everybody who had to pay full tuition and the fact that that helped them get there, yet there wasn't any discrimination between that. Mm -hmm. But again, it was today's society and um, our current state in our economy, it's tough for everyone to pay and get into schools, but so it does so help towards it. Yeah, so thank you, Jessica. So is the issue potentially, Jeremy, that if they were totally need blind and they accepted people who just couldn't get to the amount that you need to get to, to pay for year after year after year, so you, ha you hate you hate for everyone when someone has to drop out in the sophomore year, junior year, whatever, strictly for financial, uh, not an unexpected financial thing that's going to happen, but for they just can't they just can't get there in terms of what the dollar amount is. That the position that that person had could have gone to someone else. I mean, is that is that too brutal a reality to talk in those terms? I mean, you know, that's that's how some people are qualifying it, certainly. Um, you know, some people are saying, you know, GW has a limited amount of financial aid that it can allocate uh, because the university every year with the Board of Trustees meeting determines this is how much money we're going to allocate for financial aid. Mm -hmm. um, and that pool is limited. So, so essentially the university is saying 
if we had a need blind policy, we would be you know, shortchanging some students who would need more financial aid. Um, and, and because GW is not an institution that can meet 100% sure. of every student's financial need, that's, that's uh, essentially the financial reality. Undoubtedly, we have not heard the last of this story. And as we, as we mentioned, uh, these issues are, are issues that schools everywhere are grappling with. Jeremy Diamond is assistant news editor at the GW Hatchet, the student paper at uh, George Washington University. Read more of his work uh, online on their website. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you very much. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll tell you about relief at the pump. <laughs>